All right, we're going to continue a section 1.3 from chapter 1, and we're going to be looking at a new measure of spread uh, for most of you called the standard deviation. So it is the most common measure of spread, and it looks at how far each observation is from the mean. And that's why we call it the standard deviation. So let's just start with some data sets and we'll uh, kind of use that as a way to kind of illustrate how to calculate the standard deviation. So we've got data on the number of pets owned by a group of nine children. Okay, so we look down here below. Uh, so one child has one pet. There's another child that has three pets. Looks like there are three children here that have four pets each. There's a child that has five pets and there's even one uh, child here that says they have nine pets. Okay, so we look at that data. We're going to use this to calculate the standard deviation. So first thing to do is to calculate the mean. So again we'd add these all up and divide by nine because we've got nine data points. And then we're going to calculate each deviation. In other words, how far is each of these values away from that mean? Okay, so take each observation and subtract the mean from it to find out how far away it is. If it comes out to be a negative number, we know it falls short. If it's a positive number, we know it goes it's uh, above the mean. Okay, So we calculate the mean, that is 5. Okay. So if we look at this first score, we're going to take that observation of 1. 1 minus the mean, 1 minus 5 is negative 4. So that's the first deviation. This deviates by negative 4. Again, negative means it's lower than the mean. And we'll do that with other scores as well, too. So we'll look at the score of 8. 8 minus uh, that observation minus the mean, 8 minus 5 is 3. So this is another deviation besides the negative 4. Okay? We do that with each and every one of the values. So if we did that uh, for the 1 value here, for the 1 value here, it would be 1 minus the mean, is, um, 1 minus 5 is negative 4. For the 3 observation, we take the 3, 3, take the 3 minus the mean, and get that deviation. So we get all of these deviations, all of those deviations, and then we're going to add them all up. Okay. But uh, if we look at this and we add these all up, uh, we're going to get zero. So to avoid this, and that's that we that we know that's perfect then, because those deviations should all add up to zero if the mean is truly in the middle. So we want to get some more meaningful data out of this. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually square each of those deviations. All right. So we're going to take that negative four and square it. Take that negative 2 and square it. So we're going to get all of these squared deviations uh, because now this adds up to 0. This certainly doesn't. Okay. So what we're looking for is we're kind of looking for the average, the average squared deviation. So to find out that average piece again, uh, we're going to have to add these all up, divide by 9 because that's how many values we have, and get that answer. Now that's actually called the variance. That's a vocabulary word. It would be the variance. We uh, take all these, add them all up, and divide by 9. That'll be our variance. If we take the square root of, that, of this value up here, uh, that's how we get the standard deviation. Okay? So, kind of doing the math on this, if I add these all up, these are the squared deviations. Those are the squared deviations. If I add those all up, I'll get 52. And then uh, we actually do this. Well, that's kind of why we have this in quotes here, this quote average. Because you'd think normally you take that number and divide by 9, because there's 9 values here. Well, something we'll get into a little bit later, we actually divide by the number of values minus 1. Uh, to put in, this, in the standard deviation. That's just part of the calculation, the, der, uh, the der, der, derivation of that formula. So that's why we kind of have this in quotes right here. It's the not really the average, it's the quote average. Um, so this value here then, so we take that, add up all those 
squared deviations, divide by n minus 1, or in this case divide by 8, we get that. That's called the variance. Well, as we say here, to get that standard deviation, we're just going to take the square root of that variance. Take the square of 6.5 and get 2.55. So kind of what this means is 2.55 is the standard deviation. I like to think of that as the quote-unquote average error that each value is away from the mean. So on average, uh, in this data set here, okay, our mean was at 5. On average, these values are 2.55 units away from that. Right. So reiterating it, the standard deviation, we abbreviate that as S sub X. That's kind of the abbreviation for standard deviation. It measures the average distance that observations are from their mean. All right. So what we do is we find the squared distances and find the quote average of those, so divide by n minus 1, and then if you square root that you get the standard deviation. If we don't square root it, it's just called the variance. So again, kind of a fancy formula. Variance, well, if, remember now here, if standard deviation is s sub x, and, if, and to get that we had to square root the variance. Well, if I square this, that's what I'm looking at here, if I square this, square the standard deviation, we have s sub x squared, that's called variance. And again, to calculate that, we would take each score minus the mean, square it, each score minus the mean, square it, add them all up, Divide by n minus 1. Again, that's kind of that, quote, average. We normally would divide by n, but uh, this formula dictates that we divide by n minus 1. Um, and we can shorten this notation by saying, hey, let's sum up. Remember, this means sum up all of the squared deviations. And here we're multiplying by 1 over n minus 1, which is really kind of just taking this all and just dividing it by n minus 1. That's the variance. To get the standard deviation, you'd have to square root all that. And that's what's shown down here. Okay, so now, how do we choose which measure of center and which measure, measure of spread? You got a choice, okay, uh, for center and spread. So I would say if you are using the mean you'll use the standard deviation as a measure of the spread. So if your measure of center is mean, uh, you should you choose, standard choose standard deviation as your measure of spread. Okay. If you are using median as your measure of center, you should use IQR as your measure of spread. So those are kind of paired with each other. Okay. So it says the median and IQR, so we'll use these, median and IQR, as our measure of center and spread um, for when we've got a skewed distribution or a distribution with outliers. So again, use the median and IQR, those two paired up, because they're usually better than the mean and the center deviation when they have a skewed distribution or something with outliers. Well, correlated to that then, you would use the mean and the standard deviation, use those two, when you've got a symmetric distribution and don't have outliers. Okay. So mean and standard deviation, symmetric. Use it on symmetric data. Median and interquart IQR, right, interquartile range, use that on skewed data. Okay. So now again, just a little note, numerical summaries do not fully describe the shape of a distribution. Always, 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 always plot your data. Make a graph of your data. Always do that. A picture is worth a thousand words. Please, please, please do that. So, as you learn more about statistics, you'll have to solve more and more complex problems. 
For right now, we've got kind of a four-step process you can follow. This is kind of just a general uh, just problem-solving procedure we would use for anything uh, sort of in math or life for that matter. All right. So ask yourself, what's the question you're trying to answer? State the problem. You know, always say, hey, what's, what am I trying to do? Plan. Plan. How are you going to go about answering that question? What techniques does this problem call for? What, what tools are you going to need? Well, then do it. State, state what the question is. Plan on, you know, what are you going to, how are you going to answer that question? And then do it. You know, in our situation, you're going to make some graphs. Always make those graphs. And then do some of the calculations that are necessary. And once that's done, you always want to kind of check your answer and make a conclusion. Right? Make a conclusion. Tell, you know, tell them what you've discovered. Show them, show them what you, what kind of conclusion you've come up with. Uh, for the problem that was back up here. So again, kind of just a general rule for problem solving. State the problem, plan how you're going to answer it, do it, and then you know, tell me what you did. You know, tell me your conclusion. So here, summary of what we learned in section 1.3. Measures of center, you know, some mean and median. We now should know a little bit more about measures of spread. Okay, those are the range, IQR, and standard deviation. Should be able to do those now. Know when to do the most appropriate measure of center and spread, which we just talked about. Hey, remember the 1.5 IQR rule to help identify outliers. Maybe checking for both how far below the Q1 and how far above the Q3 uh, to see if there are truly outliers based on that rule. Should know how to make box plots. There are box and whisker plots. So again, making sure... Um, we have little data points, and maybe there's a little outlier out there. Also make sure to have a scale down the bottom, too, that we would have for those graphs. And then making sure to use appropriate graphs and the appropriate numerical summaries to compare distributions of quantitative variables. All right. Should be good to go uh, to uh, work on the last half of Section 1.3 and the end of the chapter, for that matter. Uh, so... Uh, looking at the assignment, hey, you should be able to answer these questions here now. Go 95, 97, 99, 103, 105, and 107 through 110. All right, congratulations. We're done with Chapter 1. We're going to do a little reviewing now before we take the test, and wish you luck on that first test. Good luck. See you in Chapter 2.